the underlying problem in America right now is that there's a bunch of mediocre white dudes looking at an honest definition of bigotry and saying, well, if you define it that way, even I'd be a bigot. And then thinking the problem lies with the definition. And while I'm sure I could be describing any number of people you've had to interact with online or otherwise, the mediocre white dude I'm thinking of is Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito. See, back when Obergefell was decided, he penned this snitty dissent that basically translated that misconception into legalese. His chief concern was that in protecting the legal right to same-sex marriage, the court would force the government to treat people like bigots based solely on their religious belief that being gay was a sin. In other words, he was worried that Christians would be labeled as bigots based on nothing but their bigotry. Now, to be clear, this is not a new principle. While it may have been new to apply that legal distinction to homophobes in particular, the government always treated people as bigots regardless of where that bigotry came from. If you like refused to rent a room in your hotel to a mixed-race couple, it wouldn't matter that your opposition to interracial marriage was biblical. You'd have violated the law nonetheless. But the legal playbook for Christians right now is to act like this is some sort of novel imposition on their sacred liberties as soon as it's applied to LGBTQ people. And just in case there was some homophobic Christian warrior that hadn't got the message, Alito said it loud and clear from the bench last week. The whole thing stems from a case that the court unanimously declined, but Alito felt the need to issue a, but if we did take it, here's what I would have thought statement regardless. So, so here's the case. A woman who worked for the Missouri Department of Corrections sues her employer when her boss retaliates against her for fucking his ex. She wins. Right? The court finds that the department didn't respond appropriately to her complaints and they had to pay her a bunch of money and say sorry like they really meant it. But in advance of the trial, three jurors were excused for no reason but that they openly admitted prejudice against gay people religiously. The jurors were asked if they belonged to a religion that taught them homosexuality was a sin. And when three of them said yes, the judge agreed with the plaintiff's attorney that obviously you couldn't expect them to render a fair judgment for a lesbian whose entire lawsuit revolved around a same-sex relationship. Well, one of those prospective jurors turned around and sued because she's Christian. And the sense of Christian entitlement is fucking boundless. She said she was being excluded from civic participation because of her religion. And of course, we're like, no, you were being excluded because you were a bigot. It doesn't matter where the bigotry comes from. So she appealed. Uh, now, at the appellate level, this was dismissed on a technicality, but in a manner that I can't help but equate to asking to speak to the manager's manager, she appealed to the Supreme Court. And they were like, yeah, the fucking technicality still exists at our level, too. And they declined to take the case unanimously. But Alito still felt the need to weigh in. So he issued a five-page fucking, I don't even know what it's called, a, a precision. Anyway, he issues this statement saying that it's a goddamn travesty that these jurors were excluded and that this was exactly the kind of thing he warned about in his descent to Obergefell. That thing being, of course, gay people having rights. See, the sleight of hand here is subtle enough that a lot of people actually miss it. But what Alito and all the other Christian nationalist judicial warriors are doing is they're swapping out religious status for religious belief. Well, our eyes are on the lovely assistant or the flash paper or whatever. Excluding somebody for their religious belief is fucking nothing. Right. That happens constantly and it always has. If you were going to sit on a jury, say, for uh, like a death penalty trial. They would always exclude you if you were like a Quaker who doesn't believe it, like who has a religious belief against voting to send someone to their death. Nobody objects to your exclusion, least of all Sam Alito. But all of a sudden, when we're talking about his bias, this is a fucking travesty that must be curtailed. Alito argues, presumably with a straight face, that these jurors could have rendered an impartial decision regardless of their bias. An argument that he wouldn't even bother to consider if the bias was motivated by any other thing and wasn't one he shared. Because what he's arguing here is that religious bias is better than those other biases, that religious people can uniquely transcend above their bigotry and remain dispassionately logical, irrespective of it. It's a delusion he shares, unfortunately, with damn near every mediocre white guy I've ever met. And it's a delusion that Sam Alito, no doubt, needs desperately cling to just to get to sleep every night and to wake up every morning.